Hey guys, welcome to episode 65 of 4 Player Anime Cast. Today is the 8th of April, 2017. I am your host, as always, Spire, here with you today. It's our show are of the spring 2017 season, and we're pretty revved up to go, I think. How are you doing here? Uh, to find revved up. You know, high energy, ready to go, come on. Let- Let's mm, wrap it up. I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure I fed you that cocaine. Like, buy the bag, my friend. Just before the podcast. This is this is how we do things. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, I'm good to go. Okay. Where were you last year? Near last last podcast? Yeah, that. Uh, Are you all I, right? I don't remember actually. Um, I'm good. Probably busy with something. He he was blanked out. Probably. I don't know. Yeah. All right, so what have you been uh, watching, reading, playing recently? Um, well, finished Near Automata. Well, finished, quote unquote. Uh, I got, I got the main endings, but uh, what? I gotta go Nier back. Near Automata. Go. Joke ending. Shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> just got my copy of Persona Five today. I'm happy. I'm excited. Did you, did you watch Daybreakers? Yeah, I did. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. But um, other than that, I haven't been watching much. Uh, the season fucking sucks dick. Um, something there's I didn't get to say last of, podcast. It's, it's it's not a. The the problem is there are a lot of series that like again this is the same thing. It's like Japan has a lot of wonky premises. Like oh they they got stuck on the third moon of Jupiter and now they have to find their way back with their hair or some like bullshit like that. There's but cockroaches like, that look like black people. Yeah, <laughs> and they're also in the hair. But um, uh, like three episodes in, the bottom kind of falls out. That's the big problem, right? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're used to that stuff by now, but go on. <laughs> but uh, when I say this season sucks, I mean like even the premises don't interest me. So... Yeah, well, the premises are also pretty flat, I think. Uh, it's whatever. I mean, there's a lot of sequels too. A lot of sequels of stuff I don't, yeah. I didn't watch. A lot of sequels of stuff I uh, what about dropped. Burrito, my friend? Yeah, burritos. Uh, burrito. Burrito's pretty exciting. Well, Naruto's gotta, not real anymore, <laughs> dude. Gotta watch that. Yeah, not even a thing. It's it's <laughs> over, man. It's the like, age of the ninjas is over. It's done. But um, yeah, I'll watch burrito. Well, uh, I hope he gets a gun or something. But um. No, no, don't worry. He doesn't get a gun, but he gets a science ninja, ninja tech. I uh, hope he sh- like shoots Rasengan's out of his eyeballs. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've watched. I watched uh, first episode of Attack on Titan two. People, 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 are pretty excited for that, right? For some yeah. reason, no. <laughs> but um. <laughs> If 20 million copies of uh, SAO are out of print, then I can assume that... 20 awesome. million copies in print. What was the purpose of that title, by the way? I don't know. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I watched Attack on Titan. I watched first episode of Berserk Season 2. I don't know why. I don't <laughs> Did it have any... Did it have anything... Into- oh, well, we can talk about that later. But yeah. Believe it or not, it's still bad. Um, I also... For some reason, decided to take it upon myself to watch the first episode of Arrow Manga Sensei. Yeah. Um, so how does so Arrow Manga that? Sensei yeah. here? Uh, yeah, that's that's actually that does require a bit. So, of <laughs> Arrow Manga Sensei is a uh, new series this season by the the one and only the the genius, the mastermind behind uh, the beloved series known as My Little Sister can't possibly. Be yeah, this possibly. cute. There is zero chance. <laughs> um, the series is about a a little girl, believe it or not, um, <laughs> and her brother, believe it or not. We're already on watch list. You realize this? Um, and the this this little girl, uh, she draws lewd art, and her brother oh, writes light novels. Mm-hmm. And uh, what kind of light novels? Uh, apparently good ones that sell a lot. I don't wow, know. just like Cause, Orimo. You know, that's because totally uh, because <laughs> quality is derived by sales numbers, you know. But <laughs> <Go> um, <laughs> but uh, so the twist is like at the beginning that uh, the brother doesn't know 
that his sister is the one like drawing all the stuff for his light novels, yeah, it's his and the sister God. doesn't know that, and the sister doesn't know that the brother is the one writing light novels. Mm-hmm. And then they find that out, and like, whoa, this is so crazy, dude! And then wow, shenanigans it's happen. Just like yeah, real I, life. That's exactly me. <laughs> exactly that's I mean. so me. You know, I just write <laughs> so many light novels that are bestsellers. And my little sister just happens to draw hentai, you know? And then at the same time, just like a harem just falls around me. <laughs> so, so me, you know? I can totally relate. <laughs> but yeah, that must have been... Uh, we, we were actually talking about this before the podcast, but Nier honestly took a huge bullet for us because I don't think... Okay, maybe... Okay, I think Toast is going to watch it, but... Yeah, I'm watching it. I would have maybe watched it, but it would have been through, like, gritted teeth <laughs> like it would not have been a pleasant experience because everybody here and i think a lot of the viewers uh regular listeners out there know that um i'm not the biggest fan of this uh author i guess this franchise in general so <laughs> i just want to say for everybody here I think, <laughs> like you you did you did the right thing my man <laughs> okay maybe man, not I the right know. thing but you did a thing <laughs> I don't know what came over me. I don't know why I decided to download this, but uh, I did it, and <laughs> you did it. <laughs> I star. did it, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know how to comment on the first episode because the first episode is like all plot dump with like a couple like cute moments from the uh, the little sister. Right. And then at the very end, they I guess they introduced the second girl, who's mm-hmm. kind of looks like shit, system. but <laughs> whatever. Um, like animation slides, or like what are you talking about? Nah, she she looks lame, dude. She's got like ah, okay. she's got like this weird. I don't know. She's kind of ugly. <laughs> but but uh, here, she can't possibly be this cute. Uh she's pretty ugly. <laughs> but um. I don't know, the show looks really nice. It's done by A1. Yeah, it's A1 and it's a cute series. They should be able to pull through with like and, animations uh, at least. A1's usually okay. Sometimes they sometimes they cut a few corners here and there, but sometimes um they cut a few corners, they kill a few people like that, but I mean but, Yeah, it's no big deal. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Yeah, the show looks really nice, I guess. It's a nice change of pace, I guess, considering I the only thing the only other things I've watched is Attack on Titan, which Unfortunately, it doesn't look the hottest uh, yeah. very much, and Berserk, so... Mm-hmm. So, before <laughs> yeah, you end on one. your Attack on Titan stuff, is it something that the viewers of Attack on Titan will like? Like, did they, or did they change anything up that you dislike? Or is it just more Attack on Titan? I mean, it's, it's more Attack on Titan. It's season two. Um, yeah, I mean, I will say Attack on Titan... Season two is where it's gonna start getting really, really, really stupid. But it's where the exposition gets even deeper. Uh, it's where the author starts deciding, like, "Hey, I'm gonna start writing twists." Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, these aren't very good. I'll write more. <laughs> um, yeah. Twists to fix your twists. It's like lies to fix lies, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're going into Attack on Titan and you're like super serious about it. Attack on Titans, this super serious dark anime, and it's it's for adults and shit. Um, I don't think you're gonna enjoy season two because season dumb. two gets really dumb. And if you can't like laugh at Attack on Titan's stupidity, I feel like you're probably not gonna enjoy uh, Attack on Titan from here on out. It gets less more about. It gets less interesting about moral. Uh, uh. It gets, you less, okay? <laughs> it gets less about, I'm going to kill all the Titans, to we're going to explore the physiology of these Titans, and why do they appear, and and so whatnot. Yeah. yeah. They take, like, a university he class on these, like, the Titans. Like, <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, they start getting into the lore, and, uh... The lore. <laughs> it's not very good, but it's, it's yeah. funny. It's fun. Okay. At least that's nice. Alright, so then, moving on, uh, Toast... Hello. I know you have a lot to talk about certain uh, adaptations of games and stuff. Uh, do you want to get that off your chest before we talk about adaptations before of games? Before we move on, yeah. Like what? Adaptations of certain card games. 
It's not out yet. It comes out in May. Oh, uh, if you're talking about Yu-Gi-Oh. In May? Really? Yu-Gi-Oh. I thought it came out in late May. April. I wish. Is Yu-Gi-Oh getting another movie? No, it's, uh, it's or like another series. Brains, man, the new season. <laughs> it's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, what? Other than uh, waiting for Yu-Gi-Oh, what have what have you been watching recently? I watched or reading. Buso Shoujo Machiavellianism. Yes, the the, the fan service, one of the uh, fan service series. Uh, I believe it is a light novel adaptation, if I remember correctly, or a light novel original. And uh, it's, it's about fan a service. I thought it was a comedy. Who... What? I thought it was a comedy. Uh, I mean, it is. It it, it doesn't comedy. The chicks, the chicks with the swords and and the mask. Yeah, but it's but it's all fan service. It, like it's mainly fan service. Yeah, um, it's uh, about a dude who you know arrives as a delinquent at the school against you know five girls who are kind of ruling the school from the top using their swords and their martial arts prowess. Um, just to, like uh, uh, real life, but, but just <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like just like real life. Yeah, but what are you gonna say? Uh, like. Makenki or uh, yeah, Makenki uh, in a sense. What's, yeah. What's that other th- with the girls and the it begins with an I. It begins with what? It begins with an I. Uh, it's a bunch, bunch of girls fight each other. Uh, not sure. Uh, you'd yeah. have to search that up. But uh, uh so it, they have there you go. Ah, uh, Ikitosen. Yes, the spirits of the spirits of the warriors or whatever. Yeah. But yes. Um. Much like Ikitosa or Makiki, the girls kind of rule over and they have these powers. And uh, the guy, the point is, the guy kind of goes through the school and kind of, I guess, he, he's going to end up you know, preserving his way of life, his freedom, while duking it out with the girls, you know, clashing clashing uh, heads with them and kind of wow. having action scenes, comedy scenes, you know, fan service scenes where he, you know, beats the girls up or whatever and he's just like, and then like, wow, accidentally women beating in 2017. Can't you can't do that. <laughs> Hashtag women beating 2017. Um, Gender equality is what that is. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's essentially what happens. Uh, I think I, I mean, I watched the first episode of it too. I have not read the light novel myself. Um, How'd you find the toast? I mean, you, you said it was a, like a fan service thing. I thought it was a comedy. I mean, it does have comedy, but like, the, I think the backbone is fan service. They aren't. They are mutually exclusive, you know. Yeah. yeah. The the backbone is like rom com harem, probably. Like right. there are five girls, one guy, I mean, and they're all gonna give you that, right? The like, basic premise is happen? this dude is like, this school is where all these girls have control because, yeah, like all the dude. Oh, yeah, used to same, be an all girls yeah. school, but all the dudes who go there are like delinquents. Yeah. And it's famous for their uh. Ref- Reformation. Reformation of the delinquents. Sounds and, like a certain award-winning series I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's not <so> true. <laughs> and like all the previous delinquents that now attend the school have like turned into Okama. Like, yeah, or like uh, girlish guys. Yeah. They go from these tough delinquents to like they're wearing makeup and acting all girly just so they could fit in and survive in this school because the girls are the... Uh, Ruled by the fi- the five supreme swords or whatever, yeah. And this dude's like next delinquent. He comes in, he's famous for having beat up forty people, yeah. And he's all like, oh, and then I, he's I, like, I, I want to preserve my freedom or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like after, I mean, most of the stuff is, I think the lore is honestly mostly filler. I mean, it's obviously some it sort of catalyst is. so they can pit them against each other. So and you, like, eventually, his freedom's gonna win, right? It's <laughs> like. The, the the main the main girl she's got this like mask like hollow ichigo style mask with horns and she's this uh, master of this certain like swordsman school and she does all these things but then it like, finds out later that like he's he's defenseless he doesn't have any weapons but he's like fending off his sword her sword strikes with his hands by the time it turns out he's a master swordsman too but for some reason. He gave up his sword, and now he's fighting with his fists, and spoiler, Talks he ends up beating fists, her. Yeah. <laughs> and then some wacky hijinks ensues, ensues where he ends up kissing her, and now yeah. and now he's That's on the, the most wanted list. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds but, terrible. Yeah, I mean, so, so I mean, the summary aside, what did you, what did you think of the actual, like, series? The, like, the fight scenes I mean, kind yeah, of looked nice. Person. I mean, most of it was all fighting and focused on the swords. Yeah, okay. a lot of it was action. Yeah, it's all right. It it, it was no uh, uh, what's that series? 
No, what? What? What was that one series? Rocket Aikishi. It didn't look as fancy as the oh, fight scenes in Rocket Aikishi. <laughs> well, right. I mean, yes, it's definitely it, not it as is. fancy as Rocket Aikishi, but I, it didn't have like, those in fancy my opinion, colors. I, I mean, it's. Uh, I'm not sure whether. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, 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 I want. I'm not gonna talk about Rocket Ishii, but it's I mean, like it's, your I think opinion, it's gonna go. Man. <laughs> I think it's gonna go along much the same way. Um, are you gonna continue to watch it? No, I probably I mean, am. I read the light novel, so yeah, I'll continue it. Oh, okay. Is there a translation of light novel? No, but there's a uh, manga version. Ah, uh, manga version. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, it's one of the fan service boosts this season. I think it. Holds up all the, okay. all, all the, it's good. It's good. Yeah. I'll keep continue to watch it. It has not. It has not exceeded, exceeded, nor lowered my expectations of it. So it's an okay. I, I think it's. Uh, I mean, again, as you said, like episode one is just like what episode one needed to be. But honestly, the catch comes when they've gone through all the girls, and then they actually need to do something. Whatever that something is, probably needs to hold up for the rest of this series, or it's just gonna like. I'm probably gonna drop it there. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll we'll see. It needs to have like uh, a couple more episodes because we kind of know what the next few episodes are gonna be. He's just gonna go through all the girls. Yeah, man, he's gonna he's gonna hit him with his a uh, one inch punch because that's his special move now. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's it. it that's just like, makes me yeah. want to wa- want an uh, anime adaptation of Dragon's Riding. Uh, Drag- Dragon Riding is probably coming out soon, right? Or whatever. Sure. Like, I, I want to see more. Didn't fan- they say they were making an adaptation of it, or no? I don't remember. I just. But want, I mean, that's I, also I probably want more out battle, soon. battle, battle school harem things. More yeah, fight I mean, ba- battle, battle school is nice, but they also they they also have to work like double time because you know the harem has to be there. The they always have like the one artist, or sorry, the one scriptwriter who wants to add in like character development. They have to have and like all the action and all that bullshit. So they're they have a lot of you know they have a lot of sort of baskets to fill, <laughs> so to say. We'll be on the watch out for that. Um, and we, then we arrive to dark. What uh, you've been on quite a quite a watching streak these past two weeks. <laughs> uh yeah. So I mean, I pretty much wa- I watched almost everything from the season. Uh, it like there's not there's not many things that I haven't seen from. Uh, I think like the stuff that Toast mentioned and Near mentioned were like the couple of shows that I haven't watched yet. But I saw um, I saw Alice to Zurico. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I will. Oh, I will never get that right. But oh well. <laughs> wow, um, you're so white. Yeah. Wow. True. Stop us, Comto. Keep going. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Uh, yeah. So I watched those two. Um, I wa. Oh, did I say I watched Soccer Quest? I watched Sakurada. Is Soccer yeah. Quest related to the so- like the soccer? Yeah, school? that's what no. it is. Soccer no, it is. no, it is not. And thank God. Soccer is um, space. Sakura Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I watched those. I watched Boruto, uh, the first episode, because why the hell not? <laughs> Many people in our podcast are taking very large bullets right now. <laughs> Many why not? Many bullets. Why for the fuck us. not? You know, <laughs> Age of the Ninja, the Shinobi's over. All right, guys. Here's <laughs> like. The gun. Here's the gun. Yeah, the Age of the Shinobi's <laughs> over as the villain screams while he uses uh, ninjutsu. <laughs> I want him. I want. Bruto to get a gun, and him. I want him to call it the Rasen gun. Oh snap! <laughs> oh snap! That's good. Dear God, please, we need to be harder. <laughs> like, like this this franchise cannot go on any longer without like seriously memeing the hell out. Like, I can't take this. Uh, okay, keep going. But yeah. Uh, I can't remember what else I watched that came out, but I watched a lot. Um. So as far as like backlog stuff, I got through pretty much all of. Uh, I forget what the Japanese title is, but "Engaged to the Unidentified." 
And I also no, got in the I think. Yeah, I got through all of that, and I got through fourteen episodes of Saki. So how'd you um, find both of them? Just like a quick. Uh, Saki's uh, Saki's really good. Um, I mean, so is Engaged. Engaged is a really like just a nice um, like rom com you can blast through pretty quick. Yeah. And Saki like flows really nicely just because it's like. I feel like it just it's just really good at keeping you engaged with it and kind of don't realize um how much like time is passing. <laughs> uh, like the action, action is pretty it's pretty funny. Like <laughs> it's pretty funny. There is uh a lot more um fan service than I expected. Yeah, that is very true. It's like you it's like pretty cheesy Yuri fan service like right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's uh but it's fun. No. Um, it gets it gets really silly, which is fun too, with yeah, like yeah. characters and get introducing. Like I watched one where it's this girl who says that she can make herself like invisible, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> like um, we have like superpowers with regards to like Montauk. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> I can go invisible, but nobody has to be looking at me. <laughs> the thing is, um, so wait, you 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 know about uh, Saki's sister or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, is this? Are I, you I guys talking about Majong? Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought you were talking yeah. about Sakura Quest. What's Sakura Quest about? Well, I was just covering what I was just covering yeah, what I watched this week, dude. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but um, in the future. But um, I, I was about to say. So this isn't really a spoiler. So Saki's sister, like obviously, uh, so also plays Mahjong in a sense. Um, and in another series, not the one that uh, Dark is watching right now, in another one, uh, they actually show what her power is. And it's like, and it's like a tornado is surrounding her arm, <laughs> like, like, like it's making this noise. Like, and she, and every time she like is going for like a big hand or like whatever hand she needs to win, like her hand is like, like her superpower is like, every time she gets a hand, a certain hand, it like powers up or whatever, it powers up the hand, or the 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 specific type of hand she gets, and like. Every time it's represented by her, like slamming her, like iron gripping the table, and the tornado is just like, like it's surrounding her arm and it starts covering like the board. <laughs> How? Wait, wait, wait. So you're she's whammo. Yeah. <laughs> wait, you're you're talking about mahjong hands, right? Not like physical hands, like hands. Yeah, yeah, hands. yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, stop, stop throwing me off. I thought you were talking about no, like, no, 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 no. She, she, like, she ripping her mahjong hands off. No, 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 her her mahjong hands become more powerful. But her physical hand, like yeah, it's represented by her yeah. arm, like her, yeah. her, 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 the power of the Mahjong hand becoming more powerful is represented by her physical hand being surrounded by a tornado. Does that make sense? Is there a tornado? No, hand in I can't what you mean. And then she she summoned a gigantic Mahjong piece and buried Cheezer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it, it's pretty fun. It's like it, it's a good rough, I think. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's a good time. Uh, Eto Pen shout outs to uh, that. I want to get a plushie of him, a little penguin plush. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, uh, but yeah, good. Shout out to Kimono Ch- friends for having. Shut penguins. the fuck up, Kimono. Welcome to <laughs> your we'll, we'll get back. To, we'll get back to Kimono friends with the CG later. In something that uh, has worse CG than Kimono Friends. Chapati pa. Surprising. But yeah, I think that's a, that's pretty much about it of what I watch. I watch like a couple other things that I don't really need to get into, like action series wise. But that's pretty much it. Okay. Did you All watch? Right. Oh, okay. Go oh, Hero first. Academia two, not, or not? Because no, I'm still on one. Oh. <laughs> Don't, don't worry. Right. It, it's all right. It picks up. I don't care. Does it, like, does it move? To... Does it move faster than a fucking snail in season two? Because that'd be nice. Because holy I... shit, season one was slow as fuck. Yeah, I just needed something for the gym, so I'm watching it. But yeah, season one, like nothing. I'm on episode like eight, and like nothing has happened. Nothing happens. Don't worry. <laughs> Good in, shit. And see, are they still in? The... I forgot. Like, where did season one end? Were they still fucking in no? like the? Uh... I'm not on the end of season one yet. School festival thing. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, by episode eight, uh, yeah, yeah. they're still doing a. They're doing like a fucking class test on episode eight. So. Yeah, season yeah, two I is think... where it'll start to pick up. They do more hero stuff. 
like, you know, they finish up that school thing and then they do more, uh, I'll just say they start to fight actual villains in season two if I'm guessing their, uh, how it's going to go. Okay. Yeah, that, like I mean, I didn't mind. Up. Yeah, I I didn't mind season one's like pacing because I just needed something, but I can see why people would have a problem with it. <sighs> it's so slow. Yeah, I can yeah. definitely see why. Especially, I guess like it's also different since season two is coming out, so I'm like, I know that there's more, but like if I was watching that when it first came out, that would be pretty. We finally get to the uh, sports festival, you know? That's like the. Uh... You, you like those tournament arcs? It's like that, like man. Like Naruto tournament arc. Please, though. Uh, <laughs> the Naruto now, my man. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Naruto doesn't exist anymore. My That's bad. true. It's not really. But... All right, well, we need to, you, you we notice need to move how, on. You notice how the right, roles well, have been, been, been flipped <laughs> in uh, Boruto? Where uh, Boruto's now the edgy ninja and Sarada wants to be Hokage? She's Whoa, like, dude, this is so Whoa. innovative, man. It's Whoa. like a whole different series now. <laughs> fucking hate that author. Oh, Jesus. Okay, well, the again. The of Ninjas we... is truly over. Right, <laughs> we need to move on. We actually need to move on. No more Boruto <laughs> Talk. Boruto Talk was like, over for me the moment somebody started editing the word Boruto. <laughs> no, right, that's right. the next, next podcast. Next, is next episode is Boruto episode, because we're all going to watch it. Yeah, oh yeah. my fucking god, kill me. But yeah, moving on to the main part of our <laughs> uh, section. We do have uh, one or two series we do want to talk about. But um, I'm just going to preface this, our dis- discussion. We usually stay, I think, mostly neutral, like a little bit up or down, I think, when we're, we're doing our episode one reviews, just because, you know, it's, it's not... Um, or even like on the mostly positive side because we tend to pick relatively safe I think series not like safe as in just mainstream but safe as in you know the premise could work out at least in the first couple of episodes nothing seems to be going terribly wrong stuff like that right I don't know dude I watched Daryl Manga Sensei <laughs> that is true I don't know man, I watched Boruto, man. That's you, it. you knew yeah, what yeah. you were going into and then you jumped into the sharp pool anyways <laughs> um, but again near aside <laughs> You know, we choose relatively safe stuff. So, but I'm gonna again, as I'm gonna preface this by saying, a lot of stuff we're gonna say um, is gonna be a little bit harsh, and I think we do it for a good reason. So, what with that, that said, <laughs> uh, we will go on to our first series, Alice Tozoroku. So, again, a quick summary: Alice Tozoroku is a series about. Uh, you know, girls in a research laboratory that possess a power known as House of Stream. They can turn, you know, their thoughts into, you know, powers in real life, whatever that is, whether it's wow. you know, materializing stuff, transporting, et cetera, et cetera. You mean like <laughs> Well, not exactly, but, uh, so they're, you know, they're in the experimental research laboratory and one of the girls manages, manages to escape, finds an old man uh, named Zoroku, uh, obviously, the girl's name is Alice, or Sana, actually, sorry, excuse me. Uh, Sana. <laughs> wow. I was going to say Alice because of the yeah, power, but, um, and because of the title. But uh, the, a girl named Sana manages to escape, S-A-N-A, and um, meets uh, a man named Zoroku, uh, who is a florist, and they come together and start you know, kind of interacting, doing stuff. Probably going to be escaping Spoiler. from the whatever research, whatever the research facility sends, right? So on. You're not supposed to know he's a florist, God, dude. Oh wait, really? Fucking that's <laughs> the, that... that's the reveal at the end of episode one. <laughs> I apologize. They make wow. the he's a yakuza the whole time. What a twist! <laughs> Isn't he in front of a flower shop in the like promo art though? Yeah, but how are you supposed to know that? What that means? It works with the yakuza in the beginning. Maybe, maybe Aww. the girl just likes flowers a lot. <laughs> That's true. I maybe apologize. he buys flowers. flowers for his victims. <laughs> yeah, that he kills. Yeah, and maybe he's just flowers. fucking serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> he says flowers to them. <laughs> but yeah, that's the quick summary. Uh, Dark and I did both watch this series, so uh, Dark will have a little bit to say about it. I guess uh, we'll start off. Oh, by the way, if anybody's wondering, this 
the uh, main production company, I believe, is JC Stat. Uh, yeah, no, it, yeah, main. Yeah, main. Main is a word. Main is a word to use for it. What other series do they do uh, this season? <laughs> oh, they did uh, like two other series. Yeah, season, they're doing. They're doing the um uh whatever. They did. Called, oh, yeah. Sword Oratoria. Sword, Sword Oratoria. Damashi Sword Oratoria. Is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon spinoff based on the coup that is like whatever? Uh, and Twin that? Angel Break, which is the Magical Girl series. So yeah, okay, keep on. That was the one <laughs> that I was definitely gonna. Why is JC staff picking like such bad series lately? Well, well, so well, that they can do like, this. <laughs> like great <laughs> object, heavy quality. Okay, heavy heavy Ooh. object kind of had to do it because heavy object was the same author that did uh. Cosmic yeah, Comics I get that, did. but like, what about? <laughs> Tabu Tattoo, though, man. Tattoo, we, don't talk about, we don't talk about that series. It's, it's a They're play picking on such bad stuff lately. It's a play on how tattoos are taboo in this day and age. You know? they, they won't hire just anyone if you have a tattoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so dark. Yeah. I saw, I saw. Yeah. Still hoping that it uh it you know something happens something what? happens because <laughs> like, something S needs save to. us uh uh but yeah so all right so the big issue well the big mm -hmm. thing is that like i was looking forward to the story um, mm -hmm. like i just kind of like the present uh the premise of like older character who doesn't want to get involved in stuff like in um and that part is okay i think for the most part yeah because i mean it's i mean it's only one episode but still yeah, it, I mean, it is. Like, that's the that's the highlight of it, is their interactions with each other. Mm hmm But, um, unfortunately, that can't be salvaged by some of the worst audio visuals I've seen in a very long time. <laughs> by J.C. Staff. <laughs> like, okay, so... Shitting on Berserk, like, yeah, Berserk 2016 looks bad. 2017 looks bad. This show probably looks almost worse in a lot of ways because, boy, is it the worst CG you'll ever see. It looks like a PlayStation 1 game. Like, By the way, guess, guess, who, guess who was the lead on their uh, on 3D modeling thing? Or, who, or sorry, the, who, guess who helped assist JC staff on 3D modeling? Okada Murray. A homeless <laughs> man that Bones picked <laughs> up <laughs> off the street. Okada Murray and Bones. <laughs> oh, Okada oh, Murray is Bones' new CG. And yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Bones helped the JC staff with their 3D modeling. Yeah, newsflash, so Bones doesn't do CG very often. <laughs> they do hand-drawn stuff, as you can tell by their previous works, like Redline. Yeah. Wait, well, Redline was Madhouse. <laughs> that was Madhouse, dude. <laughs> but, uh, that Madhouse, was like, Bones, I, Trigger, I, Production I, I, IG. Who cares, man? Mean, they're all the same. Right? Like, like, they're all Japanese, so they're all the same to me. <laughs> Keep going, <dude. laughs> That one was actually my bad. Uh, yeah, that's that's amazing. Fine. Keep going, keep going. Well, anyway, so, yeah. It's, it's CG is, like, fucking awful like it is so do you want to give us some examples i mean crazy uh, i guess well, i can't give you a visual stuff. example uh, okay like, give, uh, give us a car example i think a car example is so okay so some of the best examples i are in the cars in the show because mm -hmm. i mean no anime fucking draws cars anymore anyway well but like yeah, you um, compare it to something like initial d which is mostly had cg with the cars <laughs> It's like I, Initial I D went into Play-Doh mode. Initial D, <laughs> but like, like, yeah, wow. from like some of the things I've seen from Initial D, it's like, what if they took Initial D and just made all the shaders a fucking Lambert? Which, if you <laughs> don't know what a Lambert shader is, that's the default shader in pretty much any 3D program. Uh, so it just has no like no proper reflections or anything. Uh, and boy, is that what they did here? Because when a car is gray. It really looks like they just don't have anything on it at all. Um, these cars are completely untextured for the most part. Uh, they just have like a shader on them sometimes, or for, uh, most of the time, uh, which already looks awful. Uh, then you get into things like, for some reason, they decided to not also make the, C, uh, the steering wheel uh, drawn. So they made a CG steering wheel that the character was using. They, and they also the had like pretty poor sort of blending between you know the two D like drawn parts and 
the 3D backgrounds and stuff like that. Oh, so. yeah, no, like, the background, like, there was pretty much no blending. Like, yeah, the yeah. backgrounds looked fucking terrible when they were... I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen JC Staff do a uh, blending of 3D characters moving with the 3D background, like, that didn't look really jarring. Mm. Uh, it depends on, I mean, like, What's it called? What looked a little jarring, but it certainly looks significantly better. Uh, anything from Raildex when they had like the mechs in it and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, I don't like, know. It's still weird, but the, it yeah, was, it still it didn't this. look very good, though. You know. No. Like, yeah. I mean, and there were I mean, besides besides like the the stuff that you know the the base animation stuff. There are also like a lot of sort of direction mistakes, right? Yeah. Um. I haven't like really picked through a lot of them because I don't want to because it's just making me more and more depressed. But the one that I noticed on the first watch through is that at one point they're in a car and then they stop, but then it goes inside with them talk with the two characters talking to each other and the background keeps moving as if they're driving. <laughs> and he's like, "Get out!" Yeah, he says, "Get out!" to her, <laughs> and the car is still moving. <laughs> <laughs> it's like damn. Nice. But yeah, so it, it it just it just, it's just an absolute like mess of visuals. It looks like worse than something that JC has put out in like 2008. Yeah, it's it's very bad. Uh, if you look at the Anime News Network site on you know who worked on Alice and Sodoku, it's actually I think it tells a pretty big part, a, a pretty sort of major part about what's going on behind the scenes because. There are, so there are like nine different second key animation. Like there are nine different studios they outsource it to for like you know like key animation parts, and there are like a million different you know Finnish animation assistant studios in between assistant studios. Like, like it's a standard for studios to have one or two or three or four. Jesus Christ! You know, do you really need eleven studios to do in between frames? Yeah. So. so it's 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 common for you know bigger studios to have you know anywhere from one to four you know in between you know assistant studios that's fine I think but like they have like nine ten eleven in between assistant studios like something's going on something some like weird budget things going on or somebody on the production committee fucked up or somebody on the production committee thought it would be a good idea good idea to outsource literally everything and I I mean I don't know like. Why I don't know why JC staff suddenly decided to do this. I mean, I kind of know it's because they're working on three different series. But why Alice Kazuroku? Like Alice Kazuroku seems like the big series or one of the big series out of the three, right? It's I this, mean, if you were gonna choose, two, yeah, it's that and Don Machi first, yeah. and then whatever the fuck whatever the Basketball Girl is. series, is, yeah. right? It's like, but the fact that Alice Kazuroku really just kind of went down the gutter. <laughs> At some points, it's just I, I don't know. It just feels kind of uncomfortable, to say the least. Yeah, it's it's really weird, especially when you consider like you know, there's other studios that like probably have the same budgets and are like do and don't completely fuck up and are yeah. supposed to do, like eleven different places. I think yeah, the I'm... only. I don't think the only other studios that's really done this many series at the same time in recent. Maybe a one. Didn't like, Bones? A... Didn't Bones just do that though? With um, uh, Bungo, with, uh, Bungo Mob getting... Psycho, and Concrete Revolution. They did. Ah, one yes, season. yes, 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 yes. Well, but... what did they do during uh, Hero Academia as well? Didn't they have like two or three shows going on around that time as well? They just had Bungo. It was just Bungo and Bogonero. I think it was Concrete Revolution that season. I don't remember. Um, I know wait, every. They only had two. Se- they only had two seasons. For- oh wait, no, they did. They did like Bungo into like they did like Bungo twenty four episodes into Mob Psycho. Is assuming Bungo is season one. Season Bungo. Bungo is only twelve. Wait, season Bungo one season- of season. Bungo two. season two was with Mob Psycho and Concrete Revolution was season two. Wait, no, okay. It says here. Right? Oh, sorry. Okay. So at the very beginning. At, on spring 2016, they did Concrete Revolution, Boku no Hero Academia, and Bungo season. Yeah. Two. Season two, they did Show by Rock and Mob Psycho. Yeah, they did Show by Rock and Mob Psycho. And fall 2016, they did uh, Show by Rock season two, Bungo season two. 
That's what. Oh, it's okay, been. okay. So oh, yeah, they did three them. series. Uh, there's three series spring 2016, but all of them were not bad. I think. I mean, Book of no, Nero, they Nero weren't. Was fine. That, yeah, that's was what I was gonna say. Like. Bones is surprisingly good at managing their budget, so... <laughs> yeah. Doing stuff that's you, not you like... You're saying you're good with bare bones budget? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> bones Bones has made plenty of fucking terrible shit, but, um... Yeah, I feel like the problem with that is Bones... For some reason, Bones can never make a good sequel to an original series. <laughs> like, they have a lot of... They have a good amount of original series for, like, most studios... They've never made a good sequel to an original series. It's probably like, just like they, they they become popular and they're like, wait, we need to continue this idea. <laughs> like, yeah, you remember you remember fucking time. Darker Than Black season two? Because I sure as shit don't want to. Oh my god. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> yeah. Like they've never made a good sequel. It's crazy. But yeah, Bones is pretty good at doing what they do. Yeah, at least audio visuals wise, like it's not. It isn't this, whatever JC is doing, and it's just really weird and disappointing for this to be the case, because there's absolutely no reason for that to happen with JC. Like, JC doesn't it's, put it's out, like, the most amazing looking shows ever, but they're, they're pretty consistent. To yeah, being they have a standard. Like they good. have a bar to hit. Like, it's, yeah. not, it's not like Tiki and, stuff <laughs> at all. Yeah, they have a bar to hit, and it's not fucking, you know, 2004 CG with Nintendo 64 fucking textures. Yeah. <laughs> oh, at least, uh, at least the story holds up, so if, you know, they kind well, of polish up here. I mean, we don't know about that oh, yet. Oh, that's true, that's it's true. It's just episode one. I hope, and... I hope the story holds up, and it's not going to devolve into another one of, like, mass, magical girls just bopping each other on the heads kind of thing. I yeah, see, that's the problem, is that they introduce, like, a fucking shit ton of, like, other magic characters in the beginning. I mean, I wish that me, they're like, really worried. so they, they can spend more, you know, episodes of each girl, you know, chasing after the other girl, and then either they'll, you know, fight to the death, or they'll realize and maybe come join his shop, or whatever it is. But uh, the point is... Um, you know, I, I hope it's not, I hope the focus is much, 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 much more, like, by magnitude of, like, 10 or 100 times more on the, between the guy, between the old man and the girl, in, like, an Usagi drop familial fashion, slash experience, versus, you know, you kind of fashion, versus, you know, here comes the magical girl, like, <laughs> popping out from the grass. Like, yeah. I don't want that kind of shit anymore. Well. Yeah, and time will tell. And by yeah. time, I mean probably tomorrow, because that's the next episode. Yeah. Stay oh. tuned for that. And if I, fucking... I can't, I can't wait for our predictions to be, or our hopes to be wrong, and that people are still going to praise it as being like, wow, it's like, uh, it's like another unique Monica clone. <laughs> it's like there's some like, oxymoronic bullshit. Like... I, I don't think it's going to be a death, like a death battle thing, because I don't think it can be. Like, it doesn't really... It doesn't. It didn't like set itself up to be a death battle enough. Like, you know what I mean? Like these characters are very clearly not intended to kill each other. Like <laughs> that's true. There and plus, there's no like logic behind them actually killing each other. <laughs> um, that has never stopped any Japanese true, author but, from making characters kill each other. That's I mean, like true. they they set it up to where they're like it, it's essential. It's may as well have been said that they're just not supposed to kill each other. Because they're trying to get each other back, like the main girl, back to the lab. I mean, like, the main that's... the main antagonist is going to be the research facility, and then trying to convert the research facility girls onto the old man's side. That's probably going to be the major like struggle. But uh, we'll we'll see how that actually goes, and whether that's pretty much like the entire story, or whether the old man is actually going like, to do more stuff. <laughs> so I think that's the big, I think that's the big issue going on right now. How do you win over magical girls with flowers? <laughs> or just food. Just feed them. Yeah, feed them. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> by like the way, they all have to eat. Yeah. They have to eat constantly because yeah. it burns a lot of calories when they use the powers. Yeah, I mean, that 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 somewhat obeys the laws of physics on, like, the next series we're going to talk about, which is uh, Sakura de Reset. Uh, that's a Sagrada Reset Sagrada, to you, my me. friend. <laughs> so... The Sagrada Reset, whatever, why, why ever that name is on my anime list, I will never know, or on all the new sites. It's also but, subbed into the show as well. 
sometimes. Kill me. Like, it's actually Sakura, dude. Like, that's what it says on the Japanese. Oh, I know. Right, oh, yeah. no, man. I googled Sakura to reset, and it gave me Sagrada. So I think you guys are wrong. But this town's name is Sakura. Mm, I think you guys are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize, my friend. But um, anyways, so a quick summary. People are in people in this certain town have uh, powers um, that can you know sort of defy the laws of physics, do weird stuff, whatever. They're like actual superpowers, kind of. And they're fucking useless, though. We'll we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Don't <laughs> worry. Um, What's so, the difference between superpowers and magical powers? Uh, superpowers oh, are based no, on science. So really it, makes you think. Well, are, yeah. they, well, aren't those science powers then? <laughs> Thinking. <or>? Eyes. No. <laughs> really activates my almonds, you know? <laughs> oh, Jesus. But, so, in a school, there is this one guy, there's this one guy who has the power to remember everything. Like, absolutely everything. Um, no matter what happens. And a girl who Shit. has the power to reset time back to where she saved previously and this save point can be up to three days in the past so she can be like save point save for whatever and then later on she can be like reset and go back to her save point and the way these powers interact is that the boy will still remember everything even when she reset so in this way they you know they're like hey why don't we or they try to convince each other hey why don't we work together to do good things and eventually they create this idea of you know helping people out blah blah, blah help and uh, other people kind of come and join the fray wait right? say when she when she resets does she not remember no she, yeah, she doesn't yeah she does not remember what what happens okay so, so we'll get into that uh <laughs> it's actually <laughs> a funny story uh funny story that seems so all these wow, so what, that's what, the basic what, what the devil power so so all of these all of these things happen or that's the basic premise of the story they're trying to help out and they're probably going to unlock the mysteries of Sakurada town or whatever along the way or something like that so oh that's why it's called reset because she can reset yes, exactly. oh I get it now yeah. that's, that's oh, clever. Oh, whoa, dude. That's clever, dude. also one more thing that uh, apparently anybody that leaves the town will completely forget about what their power is I don't know whether their powers go away that hasn't been explained yet but they do just forget no, about. they only forget because yeah. the main character is like, "There's no difference between not knowing you have a power and not having one at all." And it's like, Whoa. actually, that's not that's, uh, that's, that's not a really true at all. Difference, because if you have like the power to just randomly explode into flames, I think <laughs> if you forgot you had that power, you'd be a little distressed. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, "What the fuck's going on?" There's no difference. You'll never be able to use your power if you don't know what it is. Always. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the premise of the story, and. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of watched it and I kind of want to talk about it with you guys so again what Nier said I, I kind of want to go into it a little bit and this will set up my impression of the story is um, the characters obviously it's supposed to be a little bit more slice of life like you ha they have supernatural powers but much like how Kokoro Connect worked uh, as a slice of life it's much more of a heavily slice of life backbone uh, with a uh, supernatural enhancement so a lot of one big thing that they do in this world building like in the initial world building is uh that i really don't like and there are like a lot of things that i don't like about sakura de reset it's sakura de reset had like a hopeful like you know like a far from afar you like squint at it and you're like hmm, sakura de reset seems like an okay series and then like i went through the episode and i was just like there are a lot of holes friends <laughs> so yeah, a lot what of if, resets if, that have to be fixed. What if one of the yeah. characters' powers is to fill all the holes? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then reset it. But um, <laughs> So one of the things that I really don't like about the world building in Sakura and Reset is that they try to downplay the powers a lot. And by downplaying, I mean like really just make it seem like it's everyday life. But not like... They don't make it try to seem like it's everyday life by having, you know, people kind of use it and then it being sort of standardized and so on. They're just like, and this is literally what one, one character says. It's like, yeah, most of, most of these powers are generally useless. And most of these powers also, are, and all of these powers just defy the laws of physics. I'm just like, wait, wait, wait. First of all, <laughs> if, there, if any of these powers are, if any of these powers, let alone all of them, are defying the laws of physics, they're 
probably not that useless. <laughs> like, like at least to like think about. Like, they're probably not that useless. <laughs> and then, so they're just like going all. They're just like going on on about these powers. And usually, every half episode or so, you'll hear somebody or other saying something like, "Wow, that power seems not impressive," or "That power seems useless." And it's like a really like pretty cool power. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Having like save points and shit seems like one of the most overpowered abilities you could possibly have. Yeah, that, that's the best part. So, so but they she go. can't remember. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. You could like yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the best part. So, shit. so they have like an entire like five, like three to five minutes where they explain what our power is, like on the school rooftop, right? And then afterwards, uh, the sidekick to the end, to the male protagonist is just like, "Yeah, that power scene is kind of useless." <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, about dude? This and, and sick, power, dude. Why would she reset if she can't remember, man? Yeah. And, and the and the best thing is um uh, when she talks about how her power, like when she explains how her power works, it, you usually think that it's like it's some sort of like weird, you know, going back in time or whatever stuff. It, it, some sort of weird stuff, right? Some kind of vaguely hand wave stuff. No, it's not even time traveling. What she says specifically is that she reconstructs the entire world's reality to the state it was back in the past. Oh, Even wait. human brain cells. So this is like Haruhi-ish. <laughs> so she literally yeah. destroys the world, then builds it all over again. She is a god. <laughs> like, no, whoa, she's dude. a fucking Langolier, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it's not that useful, so I, mean, <laughs> I don't know why people bother, right? Like, so, so there's a lot of this very weird, like, world building carefully down like not very carefully downplaying for whatever reason all this bullshit going on um and you know there are you know there are other instances of this happening where somebody will have this power that's like super useful to the plot and they're like yeah it was it wasn't a very useful power but i brought him here anyways because it was useful in this situation i'm like that, that this power is pretty useful right now. Like, I don't think you noticed. It's, Listen, it's this useful. guy, all he can do is combine two other people's powers by touching them. Like, <laughs> what could that possibly do for us? Yeah. <laughs> like, there's there's very weird thing going on, and that's only the beginning. Uh, so, like, if you get a guy that can like produce milk, and you get a guy who has like cold powers, does yes. he make ice cream? Yes. I don't know, Ghost, do you <laughs> yes. just make ice cream by throwing frozen milk into something? Yeah. Is that ice cream, do you? <laughs> Throw some milk in yeah. a freezer? <laughs> ice cream? Frozen dairy product, dude. Yeah. Yeah, frozen just, I mean, dessert. Ice cube. Like, <laughs> uh, Jesus. But it's off the, second, <laughs> the second point I was going to go into, and this is, uh, I think Dark might also want to chime in on this, is the personality of the characters are not very impressive. And yeah, personality. Yeah, I, I get. So, How do you so talk about personality of, when it's not existent? Yeah, there's a lot of. First of all, there's a lot of philosophizing in this in this episode, and I would say probably what happens to the rest of the series. And part of that I understand. I understand because it is a series that is reaching. It wants to go deep. It, it's like, what was that? What was that one puzzle game with a maze? Like. Puzzle with, like, the robots, wow, the robot sick, game. dude! That sorry, one puzzle sorry. game with a maze. Sorry, that like. Isaac? No, it's not it? Isaac. It's uh, no, 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 no. It's the maze. It's the maze. Sakura where... Dungeon. No. <laughs> that, uh, that, like Talos indie game that... Principle. Yes, Talos Principle. Sorry, with the... I was about to say robot. Excuse me. Sorry, to make it clear. Well, there you go. Yeah, so that's Talos yeah, but, Principle. Uh, yeah, so it's it was like Talos Principle, a, a game that you know philosophizes a lot about you know robots, AI, you know the difference you know between you know artificial. Am I even real? Yeah, there, there's a lot of very similar philosophizing in Sakura Dorisa, which I get because they, again, they want to have philosoph philosophical kind of themes. But first of all, that's not really the way people converse with each other. So it's kind of dispelling the size of life like aspect right there by bringing in the philosophy too much. And second of all... Why are you telling me you don't mm -hmm. like walk around with your friends talking about fucking philosophy all day? And like little riddles, yeah, and, and, yeah, and giving each other riddles, yeah, on the way home. And, and second of all, a lot of it they say a lot of stuff, but a lot of those stuff doesn't really mean anything in terms of what the series implies, where the series is going to go, 
at what the character uh, development is going to be. Like, Sounds like a new Ghost in the Shell movie. <laughs> so oh. you had at least a couple of complaints about this, right, Dark? You want to kind of, you want to kind of butt in? Um, I mean, you you semi covered like everything that I wanted to like talk like complain about. Like the the character interactions are so like they're just boring. There's really no other way <laughs> to bad. describe them other than that they're just like plain boring. They don't really accomplish anything uh, when they talk to each other. They just kind of spout nonsense. Like there's it's so no... me. <laughs> <laughs> there's no. <sighs> How does it compare like, to something like Harvey, yeah. where all I the characters were watch unique? Watch it. But they like they just start talking about philosophy. Like they pose riddles and shit. But like none of it makes none. Like it, it seems like they're just trying to be deep by saying these words, and none of them actually know what any of it means because I don't think the writer actually looked any farther into it. But like that's the problem is that it's there, and there's like it's just too shallow to really sustain itself on that. Um, I mean, it's. I mean, I don't think any of us deny that you know, it's not like people never talk about philosophical things, right? But the way that it kind of gets bought, not in the way they fucking talk about it, unless you're yeah. fucking psycho. Yeah, especially the way they kind of just, you know, they they what what usually happens in this series is like they start talking about something like some regular like slice of life related problem, right? Like, oh, this girl, like, why don't you get this girl? You know, she needs some help or something like that, and then they suddenly like. Boom! It just like it's a couple sentences in, they just go like, "Hey, this girl has an android-like personality," and they start talking about like, like differences between androids and humans, and like you know the level. Of Who's trust the android? And, Find and out like at that. the end of the summer. What? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the transitions are so weird. Like I don't understand. I mean, I I sort of understand why it's relevant, but a lot of the stuff that's being used to elaborate are very clear. It's see that good. the the problem is is that it's not relevant. It's you see where they're coming from with it, yeah. but it but it's completely irrelevant and yeah. doesn't make any sense or matter. Like and, and also a lo- another thing I I want to I'm going to point out is that when they do get to like specific character developments, a lot of the stuff like the chat the potential catalysts in the background, the um sort of plot points that or the character development points that are pointed out in the series are extremely obvious. They're very, very in your face. Like there's one thing that's just like um you know, she's they're talking about this one character and like how she deals with sadness or how she how she kind of developed in her youth and stuff like that. And uh, and then they did something like from the future she would never be the same again or some bullshit like that. I'm just like, oh god, like, like I, like, can you not throw this character development point at me so that it's so obvious, like, what you're gonna do with it for the next like couple of episodes? Like, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, sort of they they say and do too much exposition, and when characters talk to each other, it's kind of almost like they're monologuing at each other rather than really talking yeah, to exactly. each other. Exactly. Like there is not, there is not a not, there's not much character interaction because they're all like monotone and fucking boring and don't even look like they're paying attention to each other. They honestly seem like they're just spacing out, looking off into like just like what if nothing androids <laughs> like you're just like what? what? What if one of us was an android, guys? <laughs> and everyone's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, find out at the end of the summer. Who cares? I mean, It'll get us to talk. What? Are, are you an android, Dark? Because you're the only one different here. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, you I fucking whitey. <laughs> white all android. white people are androids, all right? Listen, they were, man, they were crafted to be evil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the white android. This is the sequel to the Ghost in the Shell movie now. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, yeah. I am there's... an android. <laughs> 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 Pretty good. But, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, there's a lot of small problems with that, and it doesn't help that um, the cast of the it kind of seems like half half of it kind of seems like you know they they sold it largely off 
the voice acting people too. Like Sakura Dorisa like had the whole like slice of life thing, but like you know how Orange had the whole oh it's a it's a mysterious slice of life with some aspect blah 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 like all that bullshit, right? But um, I feel like Sakura Dorisa sold a lot on partly due to its voice acting cast, which was like the two main girls in the series are is this one short haired girl voiced by Yuki Aoi, the voice behind uh the main character uh, Sonya and uh the main character the main girl in like uh Yojo Sword Senki. Art Online. Yeah, well one of the girls is sort of online I think. Um but uh, Tanya and Yojo Senki and a lot of sort of lolly characters, but she's doing like a more calm girl in this version or whatever. Uh, that's one girl, and then the other girl is being voiced by the infamous uh, Kana Hanazawa, the quiet girl. Wow, and, uh, who's, who's and, Kana Hanazawa? Shut the fuck up, Toast. <laughs> as, as you can maybe tell, because she was given a quiet role, uh, she kind of takes, she takes the quiet up to 11. <laughs> she, like, does like there's zero there's negative emoting there's yeah. negative emoting <laughs> if you if you listen to her you're just like is she is she actually like did she actually wake up to say her lines is she is she is this like actually taking up her like what's going on is she okay uh, she's <laughs> sleep talking the whole somebody time somebody help actually. her somebody help this girl but um That's how good she is yeah but uh, i kind of don't like that fact where it's like a lot of it kind of seems like they try to make sales off the fact that there were these two stars in it. Yuki Aoi has been on Rampage recently, and obviously I don't need to say anything about Kana Hanazawa. You need more stars, man. Just look at Dog Days. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> but it, it's it's very disappointing that it got managed to kind of run all the way without sort of... How do I say it? Without being... A detective for sort of the fraudulent kind of story it's telling because I really don't appreciate the fact that it try to throw all this philosophizing it try to throw all these like kind of problems in my face and be like well it's some sort of a slice of life a supernatural aspect and uh, uh, it, it's like it's gonna be talking about life and stuff and you know talking about life whatever it's all good but you know what that premise reminds me of what Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna bring that up. We don't talk about the series in here. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think. You oh, man, I'm just saying. <laughs> we don't talk about that series. But... Charlotte wasn't very good either. <laughs> yeah. Neither is Angel Beach here. anymore. Yeah. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's it, it's very frustrating how that worked out, and I really hope that it kind of looks up. But I feel like what will happen is that, much like what happened to Orange, a lot of people are going to look past, you know, what happened specifically, what kind of character developments are actually going on in the series. You know, what kind of things that do we actually need to, you know, talk about in order for the series to be, to be good, to be coherent, to be, you know, like, not just like, oh, well, I have this power, you want to solve it with me? And then we talk about the girl's feelings like it's a therapy session. Like, that's not a slice of life, okay? <laughs> does, <laughs> does it, does it have a catchy, catchy ending with a dance? Yeah, that, that's true. I need that, especially if it's wrong competition. But, um... Please don't bully the chat. Please don't bully the chat. It's but, um, super weird. That I find that, like, I imagine what people are going to do with this is like they're gonna see that hey these characters are making really obvious but also overly cynical um observations on life this show is amazing and super deep and that's yeah, as far it's as so that's me. gonna go <laughs> it's, it's, yeah pretty it's much a lot of, it's a lot of these things where it's like people people kind of just say these buzzwords right it's like it's so unique it's so deep whatever when they kind of see a hint of something but they really? don't really understand it Really makes like me think, fire. you know. If they don't understand it, it must be deep. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Toast, you're so right. It's too deep for me. It's got to be good. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's just like, and I want to take, I mean, I think we've covered more or less what we want to say about how Sakurada reset. More or less about so, I mean, bullshit, is it like so. Haruhi? 
because that's the only like mm. series I can compare it to. She's got this sort of god. No, it's Har Harry. It's more just about the girl. Just what girl, about girl the crew kind of zero? Can we stop talking about that? What about <laughs> no? <laughs> what about that? But, I, but I just wanted to turn the topic of like, you know, what, what Toast just said about, you know, deep and like what people are going to kind of expect from Sakura Aries or what people are going to see in Sakura Aries, excuse me. And um, uh, since we talk, mostly talked what we need to about Sakura Aries, but uh, as I was kind of watching Sakura Aries or as I finished up Sakura Aries and I was kind of thinking of it and podcast was coming up, and I saw this video that came out actually a year ago that was just like uh, why Grimgar's fights work, the the importance of weight in anime. And even without seeing the video, I could tell it was probably a video, some stupid video about how it's like, you know, because, you know, people actually die and these deaths matter in this anime. People die it's when like, they are killed. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I could, I could, like, even without, even without like, <clears throat> looking at the video, I could probably, like, I could 80%, 90% tell that's what it was. And that's like so. Dis that way of thinking is so disappointing, right? Because there are so many series out there that are just like, well, uh, this person is gonna die, or that person is gonna die, and he was a character in the series. But that doesn't mean like they hold importance, right? Like, like a comic kill. Uh, Fucking most of... super recently is uh, Gundam Iron Blooded Orphan season two. They kill almost everyone in that cast. Spoiler alert! And uh, oh, don't oh man, wow. no fucking terrible. Don't watch season two if you <laughs> even if you watch season one. It's not good. It just ruins the entire show. But yeah. the cat. But the problem is that the character deaths in season two don't play any importance whatsoever. Yeah, like they don't. I, they don't accomplish anything. So yeah. what I want. What I want to say is that it's like at some point it's not even about like the weight in this series because there are plenty of characters that have or sorry plenty of series that have you know characters that die in some way or whatever but it's i want to stress that grimgar like i'm not, first of all i'm not hating on grimgar right so i think grimgar is a is an okay pretty decent series not like the best but whatever it kind of drags on sometimes wow why you gotta hate on it yes uh but I think it's very wrong when people are just like, well, it's clearly the way like people actually die. Like that's a, such a shallow way of looking at it. And it's not even true in a sense, as I explained. Wow, it's just examples. like real life, man. People die. Yeah. The, the, when the they are killed. Thing, yeah. That's the, major so thing, the major thing that's important about it, and this brings us back to why we went off tangent from Sakura to Reset, is the interactions. It's the fact that in Grimgar, when they're you know fighting and doing whatever, um, it's portrayed in a realistic manner when they fail, when they succeed, or uh, you know, if they succeed, they're like usually struggling by because they just got to that level, stuff like that. It's very sort of planned out in how these human interactions are going to barely work out. It's very different uh, with regards to you know a lot of other stuff, as I said, you know, come and get killed or you know, whatever. When people are just kind of getting killed left and right. And they don't show this accurate like uh, interaction, regardless of the weight of the character, right? Like that's sort of what's really frustrating to me in a sense, because people are not going, people are not considering these much more common human themes, like how they were considered in what people may consider, you know, wrong, like light long wrong comes like Sakura, so uh, where. They were just like, okay, this person is failing. Like, how do we, how do we really think about this idea of failure? They don't really go through that, and that's what's really frustrating to me. And that's, you know, it's it's partly yes because the producers are kind of lazy or the authors are too lazy, but it's also partly because the people reviewing it, the people reading it, doing it, so on, are just they they just. You know, they see the cover, they're just like, oh, does this thing have a person dying instead of the same wrong come over and over again? Then it must be deep. And like, well, yes, it, it, like these wrong come series are repetitive or whatever. That doesn't necessarily also make it true that whenever a series has somebody dying or, you know, running off a cliff or, you know, going back in time to fix things or whatever, that doesn't necessarily make things uh, better. So that's just 
sort of what I wanted to get off my chest, honestly, because it's like, it's, it's really frustrating to see a series like this, just be like, oh, she has no emotions, or it's like, you got to recover her emotions, or like, you got to do stuff, or whatever, and just not go through the proper steps. And it's, I don't know. It's 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 very frustrating to me sometimes. Fire, <laughs> I think it's just not for you, and you shouldn't say anything. All right, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I apologize, friends. <laughs> but yeah, uh, did you did you want to make any last comments on this series, Dark Sakura Reset in particular? Um, I mean, it to me, I don't really think it has much more potential after episode <laughs> one and leading after episode two. I don't <laughs> think we're gonna really see any changes, like major changes. Mm-hmm. It's just the way that the characters are. Like the fact that we don't see at any point in the show, like the characters being anything other than like these fucking monotone people that monologue at each other. Like yeah. I really don't think we're gonna see much else. And I know that's like in most cases that'd be unfair for a first episode. Mm-hmm. But the fact that that's all we saw in the first episode, we didn't even see like really a glimpse of anything else. I don't. I think it'll be. A fucking miracle if we see something else in the show. Yeah, it's especially it's, with the lead into the second episode because the second episode does not seem like it's going to be any. Yeah. We're going to see like them actually use the fucking powers, but uh, properly. But like, I don't think we're going to see much differences in the way of like character interaction. Oh, uh, be so... sad about Cicada's kid. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's really unfortunate because you know Sakura Dori said Alice Sosoroku were both two of this I guess seemingly deeper series that we thought we were going to get into, but it didn't work out that way. So unfortunate. That's just episode one, man. What if it? That's true. We have to wait for yeah, like three more episodes. <laughs> what if it just becomes a fucking masterpiece on yeah, episode like, three? What yeah. if it becomes the Haruhi? Of uh, actually, it probably won't because episode three is the last episode of this arc that they're in right now. So. Not like this. It's over. <laughs> wow. It's over. We're probably not going to get anything different for a while. Yeah, it's over, friends. But yeah, that was that was our review of Sakura at Reset. If anything hap- if anything super major happens, we'll probably report on it. But still, we're not expecting too much from it for right now. But yeah, again, thanks for the discussion and uh, for our last sort of. Uh, Quick talk before we move on to news. Toast, do you want to talk about a certain uh, Gunpla, <laughs> Gunpla oh. series? Certain a certain series involving. It's not the Gunpla. Girls. They're not Gundams. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They're Plamo at best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pura model, man. Yeah. But uh, the series I was talking about is actually uh, Frame Arms Girls, or also known as FAG. FA girls or whatever. Uh, FA no, girls. Fag IRL actually. <laughs> yes. uh, so the it's essentially just mecha girl figurines that come to life, do stuff. I mean, I don't know much about much more. I haven't seen it myself yet. Actually, please buy our figurines. The please show. buy our figurines. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's well, that may be true. It's I think it's fine that way. Yeah. I I mean uh, I. I'd rather it be like here. Here are figurines doing figurine things. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's okay. If, if I it's mean, just kind of pure, gonna go that part. I didn't say it's a bad thing, but it's yeah. kind of it's kind of funny that it's just. Please, please buy our frame arms, girls. Please buy our figurines. <laughs> what, was the, what was the last please. series that had well, was based off uh, figurines that went too deep into the story and ended up being pretty bad? Uh, I mean, Busoshiki did that, but the issue is, it's like the issue with these series, it's like. They, a lot of these places, like, they just kind of want, cause like the companies and like the people that they hire, like they're all just kind of interested in doing that, right? There's gonna be one artist or one scriptwriter that's just like, hmm, should we do like a deep story? And then probably like everybody else in the company just shuts them up. Like, I, I think that's what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> it's, yeah, like, it's, it's like it's like that. It's like that like picture of that guy gets that gets thrown out of the meeting, like the building, <laughs> like the high story building. <laughs> For suggesting something, it's like that. You say you saying you you. It's like, but that's. Are you okay? <laughs> I, I'm I'm getting a a little worked up right now because the last series I watched where uh, they turned some some adaptation into some sort of serious anime was pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. Like a lot of these sorts of adaptations are pretty bad, but 
I think they could be. I mean, like, we, but it's you, very hard to do so because nobody kind of wants to do that. It's the major thing. I'd, I'd rather it be slight, pure slice of life doing average things and uh, trying to be all serious and messing it up because you know. Yeah, yeah, that is very true. Or, yeah, or, or, or you could. Be. I wonder what you could possibly be talking about. <laughs> or it could be wishy washy and have it like, oh, we're going to do this slice of life episode. And then next episode, hey, we're going to be super serious with this. <laughs> oh, Toast. Hmm. You're so funny. I wonder what Toast is talking about. That's totally me. <laughs> totally me. It's like, we're, we're going to have this kid. We're, we're going to like hang out with our friends and do stuff. And then next episode, we're, we're going to die. And then we're going to. Oh, gonna no, she's dead. Completely distraught. <laughs> I That's wanted to get some bento with her, but she's dead now. <laughs> oh yeah. well, moving on. It's it, it's kind of I'm probably gonna watch it too because I also did watch Buso Shinki Moon Angel when it came out like one or two years ago. What's that? Uh, it's, it's essentially the same thing, but instead of the protagonist being a girl, it's a guy, and then they do I mean, actually like plot kind of things. <laughs> oh, I like you brought you bring that up, and the main thing about Frame Arms Girls is there's this chick who like. This average chick, who's like average, average, and then she suddenly gets a package from a carrier drone. Kaha! Uh -huh. <laughs> like, like right in front of Amazon the Amazon drones! And she's like, what's this? And then she opens it up and bam, it's a frame girl. She yeah. she opened somebody else's mail? No, it's her mail. <laughs> That's what you do too. To yeah. yeah, the Amazon drone delivered it right to her, man. Yeah. But she wasn't expecting it. Yeah, man. No. But don't she worry. didn't order Her dad sent it to her. Her dad yeah. sent it Thanks. to her out. Overseas. Oh, thanks for the unwanted gift, Dad. But yeah, it's if you've seen some, if you've seen like you know these other shows where some kid controls a bunch of tiny robots like a Metabots <laughs> or Angelic Lair, it's pretty much like that. I mean, what can go wrong, man? Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty straightforward as it is. So again, if you do enjoy these types of things, or if you wanted something like Buso Shingi, but without the whole like weird mystery corporation thing happening, then go for it. I mean, these these uh, these frame arms girls are like this new this new toy thing. They come with this state of the art like AI, like this AI that only, it is the equivalent of a ten year old girl. So you know you got to teach them things in life. <laughs> like you got to teach them emotions. It seems like a really <laughs> bad idea. <laughs> Teach them about the real world. They're look near. They're like fucking eight inches tall. What what could they possibly? It seems like an even worse idea. You just you accidentally like step on them as you enter the room or something. Like, don't worry, they can move out of the way. Ten they're inches. virtually indestructible. <laughs> I don't know about no, that. No, no, they're made of plastic. <laughs> it's like, no, they're not. She squishes her face and she says her face is soft. Maybe it's yeah. soft plastic. Soft yeah, dude, plastic. the future. They have they have that squishy. Uh, PVC now with uh, oh, yeah, that like is Sonico's that is PVC, huh? Sonico's butt. It's and like it, realistic. Yeah, it's like realistic skin now. It's like real life. Yeah. Yeah. It's like oh, wait, my, Momo, my Momo Hime has that on her thighs. It's pretty nice. <laughs> she she activates Gorai, which is the name of like this tank tank girl with a cool smooth bore cannon. And she's all like, give, give. She's all like, equip my armor for me. And she's like, how do I do that? And it's like. You better Just use, buy it on Amazon. You better use these <laughs> clippers, and then it's like it walks you through a uh, walks you through how to attach. You know, if you if you know what plastic models are or gun plow and whatnot, it's like that. You got. You yeah, got so it, it got. does go through more trivia. It does go through some more trivia yeah. instead of just being like, uh, we're we've got these mecha girls or whatever. So that's nice. Yeah, and then like it, this is actually a uh, it's actually a two two part episode where it's like. The first episode just has Gorai, and then like you get your second episode, and then suddenly two more appear. Yeah. Because apparently, <laughs> uh, they sent all these Gorai to random people in Japan, but hers is the only one that's activated. Cause so yeah, I mean that's be, that's like, the whole special. Battle. Yeah. <laughs> and then like these other two frame arms girls are already activated, and they're like fight me, Gorai, and so she's like, okay, but how do I do that? And suddenly they set up for this battle, and then. And then it we have a battle. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh. Well, again, if you if you if you want to keep watching or like or if other if the listeners want to keep watching it, just uh, do check it out. I mean, I think I think it's. I'll, gonna I'll be talk okay. more about it next time because uh, I'm actually starting to like it more and more the more that I think about it.
You know, tell, tell Sarah the urge to go fun. shopping. <laughs> it's fun. Um, I think what'll be really cool is the, um, they hint at it in like, well, I mean, they hint at it during the entire show, but I think a lot of it is going to be focused on the, like them interacting with each other and like learning stuff. Because mm-hmm. like there's a lot of, in the OP of them like, like hanging out in the, the oh, regular so. world, like sitting yeah. on a fucking ledge with a cat looking <laughs> at it. <laughs> so I think I think getting into shenanigans like that will be pretty fun. Okay, that'll be long, nice. I like, uh, yeah, as long as it's like mostly slice of life and doesn't get too serious. Like, like it turns out these flame arms girls are weapons of war, and it's like, and it's, the red, the red. Then, <laughs> then they start fighting the the dark flame arms girls, <laughs> and then Bro, one of them dies. The <laughs> and then the next episode, they start eating curry. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I all right, really so we do. Like <laughs> all right, so we do need to move on. But again, thank you, Tess, for the uh, review, and uh, be sure to do. Be sure to like tell us your impressions. Uh, uh, like after they kind of elaborated on sort of the world. So with that, we do need to move on to the news, and we did skip the news last time, uh, but we're not going to do like a month's worth of news. Sorry, guys. Uh, that's just. But so much has happened. Yeah. But uh, we are going to cover the last two weeks of news, and uh, there are some still some funny stuff going on. First off, uh, there's a fake Grand Order smartphone game that's, or I mean, or there's stage play that's getting made, and the stage play is about the smartphone game Fake Grand Order. Who's uh, playing Rio? <laughs> uh... Yeah, who's playing Rio? Or good echoes Rio because I'm most interested in that. I I I'm not sure what's going on, but I hope it's gonna be okay. I mean, it's definitely okay. FTO is big enough to get a stage play of any anything is gonna get it, but like, still, like, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> big enough Does to get a media right now? As well. Yeah, I was gonna say. It's fucking shit. Not very good. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Uh, and along the uh, lines, uh, live animation, heart algorithm, animated virtual idol projects. So before we had um, that one idol project by the AKB producer, right? That was just like, uh, well, I want to create an idol group that transcends boundaries or transcends dimensions or some bullshit, right? Now there is apparently a virtual idol project, which is a co-production between Japanese and Chinese companies. And uh, it says... Well, first animated live documentary variety program. So, if you guys remember, there was actually a show, say two, four years ago, two, two or three years ago. That was like they had animators that drew the anime, or like animated it, CG did draw, draw or whatever, as like the idols were like acting it out or something like that. It was very weird. Like. <laughs> that one? I was gonna bring that up. Because <laughs> um, you, maybe you're but, talking uh, about that sounds like rotoscoping, and the only rotoscoping anime no, I no, saw no, was Akuna no, no. and, and no one like that. <laughs> that'd, that'd be rotoscope. pretty great. Akuna Hana idols. But uh, yeah, there there's this weird thing where uh, there are these two idols that were acting it out, and like in the like while it was like being acted out and doing all of that, like the animators were like animating at the same time, like CG mode. It was really weird. But I guess they're trying to extend it sort of like that. It's, it also helps like extend the technology that Japan is trying to like continually grow where it's like they're trying to live animate stuff that's like being acted out slash scripted at the same time. It's really weird. Um, Why not just have more Miku concerts? That seems, <laughs> that seems like a safer investment. Yeah, I... I, the thing is, like, I get why they want to do this, and it, partly it's like about cutting costs, just like the CG stuff, right? But it's like at the same time, doing this sort of stuff, I think, is gets really awkward. I mean, not just because the technology isn't there, but like just the general idea of it. Like, it's just very awkward to set up. So I don't know how much, how farther, it will, how farther it will go. So, oh yeah, this is this is this is the series I was talking about. They explained that in the article. Minarai Diva, an anime series animated with Miku Miku Dance software and motion capture technology. Wow, aired in Japan MMD. Yeah, it was the first live anime program. So, like, they wanted to try to do that. So, 
I I hope it goes well. Maybe we'll see hear some good news from it. But like, uh, eh, eh, eh. what a time to be alive! Yeah. Uh, in the Kimono Friends world, if you haven't heard Kimono Friends, it's like the newest really weird Yo, viral craze. Yeah, <laughs> buddy Buck. But um, it, Kimono Friends is like the new viral craze going on over in Japan, especially in the Twitterverse. A hot um, new meme. Yeah, it it was originally a game. Now it's like an anime, and anime, the anime also made it viral. Kimono Friends. Uh, the staff of the Kimono Friends anime announced on Wednesday, uh, I believe this was uh, two weeks ago, that a new quote unquote new video project has been greenlit for the franchise. The staff also shared the visual and logo below to correspond with the announcement. I don't know what new Kimono video Friends project... Two, the game, the movie. <laughs> probably, I don't know what it's probably an OVA. I think it's an ONA, maybe. They're just gonna like yeah. kind of stream it on the video and shit like that. But, but yeah, it's uh. Season two confirmed. And uh, as apparently, next <laughs> apparently, Kimono Friends gets really real near the end. <laughs> it's like just like real life, real. <laughs> isn't it present? Isn't it's like premise kind of like fucked up? Where yeah, like, like it, apparently it gets really messed up near the end. I don't know. I'm not gonna like, watch it to there find like out. Racist but undertones in Kimono Friends, something like that. Uh, there's there's racist undertones in a lot of Japanese stuff. Yeah. So. I mean, wouldn't surprise me. But. Yeah. Also, um, another news is that a spokesperson for the public relations department of the company Nexon told the IT ah, media news website on Thursday that the return of the Kimono Friends smartphone app is possible. The spokesperson added, "As of right now, there has been no decision made, so they're wow. essentially mm. trying to squeeze as much money out of us." That's possible. pretty I, wacky. I mean, PR stuff, man. Couple yeah. couple months ago, they said there was no chance in hell. That yeah. the fucking app was coming back. Essentially, they're just smelling it. If they smell enough money, they might just make something like spin off the random, random shit and just run away with it. But like, I'm bad. <laughs> just gonna be like, whatever. Kind of oh, funny that um money. Yeah, it's kind of funny that the game just straight up died right before yeah. this series yeah. got popular. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, we would, we would release it for you guys, but it's kind of not there. <laughs> like. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, so if anybody's <laughs> so if anybody's in, uh, a fan of the Kimono Friends, uh, then you I have a lot to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> on the visual novel front, there's actually a lot going on. Uh, first of all, Manga Gamer is set to release a couple of games. First of all, Minori, who I did, I believe, did uh, Eden Plus, which is like a weird like romance science fiction and world kind of thing um they are doing a new game and uh the manga gamers will publish it called trinolin ll move and uh a delta's hashihime of the old book town boys love game so those two games are set to be released by manga gamers in the in the future and they yeah so they're what yeah the art's nice yeah, the arts. So what I'm kind of noticing also is that Manga Gamer is trying to move a lot more into the, uh, again, the mainstream market. Even though you know before, uh, I think as everybody who has ever bought or heard anything from Manga Gamers uh, knows, they kind of hate doing anything related to mainstream novels. And that's not because they hate the novels themselves. It's because they won't sell, man. Yeah, they're just like. Anything but new cookies won't uh, make us a profit. That's a specific thing, that right? Like they'll sell, but it won't make a profit compared to like it's the. It's the, better the, to be niche than it is to like trying to compete with yeah. all this stuff. And I'm fine but with I, that. Yeah, but as you know, the market moves on, and especially since other sort of producers, and especially like the studios themselves, as the studios themselves start coming onto Steam and they're coming onto you know the market uh, for West, Western localization, and they're hiring like their own teams, like the bigger ones, like Visual Arts are. You know, hiring their own teams for stuff like this. Um, I see. I guess manga gamers and soy are starting to realize that this is sort of the next stage of things. Whether they like it or not, they kind of have to find some way to, you know, be be on the front step, be on be on the front edge. You know, make the money from mainstream games however they can instead of kind of sinking back into newbie games. Because I think once this market does go into full swing and these mainstream series or these sort of you know, more vanilla series start coming up by the bucket load. 
and the bottleneck in Japan starts starts loosening, like Mono Gamers is gonna get left behind. It's it's gonna be over. What a, like, what about Nataku? That's coming. <laughs> this train is pretty up and coming too. They they just got they're getting a Mononofu Battle Princess of White Lily and Chrono Clock. Yeah. And, and they do have a Chrono Clock apparently had did not have a very good localization, but it's like I mean there there's always gonna be a I'm market for, my for otherwise I'd buy it. Yeah. Well, there's always going to be a market for like second rate, like shitty things like kusoge, right? And then a famous Japanese term is kusoge. And people kind of just want to buy and just want to play for like 30 minutes to an hour and be like, oh, wow. Yeah, dude. This wow. Game. Princess yeah, Evangel- Evangel- Princess Evangel is like $45. Hey, Princess Evangel is like okay, except Boy, like Kimi every is still really... $45. Demon Master Chris is 17 well, Aren't those all Denpa's? Brave Soul Queen? is $15. Wait, Koyami Muso is uh, like Dentasoft or Manga Gamers, right? Stop the Earth! I'm getting the, off Crystal Yeah, Stone. Manga Gamers said Koyami. But I mean, the point I was trying to make is that like there, there's always going to be like, like niche studios. But like Manga Gamers can't stay a niche studio forever. It's very hard. It's become much, much harder for them because they're all the size where like, they need to start doing like other stuff. <laughs> like they, they can't make enough profits from Yuki Game more. I think. I, I mean, unless they want to not expand ever. Right, so <laughs> as long as they translate more rants before they die, I'll be happy. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but oh, but don't, yes. don't worry, near soccer dungeon is only twenty dollars now. Mm. <laughs> Thank God. But yeah, with that, uh, manga gamers and visual art is also planning on releasing again the English edition of Little Busters, and they began streaming the opening movie for its. English for the English intro on last week, well, or last Friday. Um, the company confirmed that it does plan to release the game in English on Steam. So, for those of you who are on Steam and are always looking on, on the lookout, uh, this oh wow, okay. Um, the game $50. will dollars. Fuck you. <laughs> the game will include content from Dragon Busters, EX Perfection, and a theater version of the original game. Wait, wait, what? God. Wait, did you say Little I, Busters I like Ecstasy? No, 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 I don't think... I think it is EX. I think it is Ecstasy. I'm not That's entirely Ecstasy sure. Version. That's the like, only update. Yeah, 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 Ecstasy. I know Ecstasy. Is they're, they're putting that on Steam? Yeah, if they're putting the Ecstasy <sighs> version on Steam, I might buy it. But it's like, I'll, I'll have to buy it then. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> you, see, you see how it's like... I like subconscious venom I put in when Nier was just like it's gonna be fifty dollars. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I was pretty triggered by that. Um, why like, would I buy the game when it already has an anime? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I All really right. do like Little Busters. But uh, again, if you if you do it's like, like Little Busters, version. I mean, like yeah. people are just gonna. Like, it's probably just gonna add in like the like the extra two routes, but people are just gonna yeah, like no, add in yeah. the. Other scenes and whatnot, so yeah. Um, for those of you who have seen the anime or know anything about Clonod, he, whatever, visual arts, please do check out this game. And if you if you haven't played it before, buy it on Steam, do whatever you can to support it. I honestly, again, Spire likes it more than Clonad, and I like Clonad yeah. better, so I, I think, I think, anime wise, Clonod blows wow. the busters out of the water, like, period. Like Canon better. <laughs> well, the, the whole like mm-hmm. canon air clown thing is like another discussion but uh, the point is like with with the main like you know like the the thing that when you think of p like studios is usually clown right like when, when you talk yeah. to people yeah for sure but, yeah so so in comparison to that i think clown anime blows little busters out of the water oh, for sure in terms of the anime or sorry in terms of the visual novel i think actually little busters is better than clown in what they're trying to do so Please do check it out. The I'll fight you on that. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I mean, this is uh, it's just just my opinion, man. <laughs> but uh, no opinion's wrong. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, shit. Again, please do check it out. It, like even even if you do, even if you don't agree with me on the visual novel opinions, it is one of the better key studio visual novels to have come out in the in the recent years. So it's not recent years. It it's more like. I mean, it's not rewrite. <laughs> it's not a rewrite. It's not a yeah. Charlotte. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, so it's not Angel. V- no, Angel Beast was good. All right, we need to move fuck on. you. I do like Angel Beast. <laughs> but um, that was on the visual novel front. Uh, moving on, 
we are going on to actually some interesting manga news. There's going to be a lot of like awards and numbers and stuff now. And the first piece of news is the 41st annual Kodansha Manga Awards nominees have been announced. And as people know, Kodan, people like Kodansha, Shueisha, and so on are sort of major publishers of manga and uh, other magazines in Japan. And Kodansha Manga Awards are usually like big stuff. Like it's uh, like one of the bigger awards in Japan for manga. So. So here are the lists, or here are the nominees. So they haven't uh, announced the awards. The winner for each category, the categories are for best shonen manga, best shoujo manga, and best general manga. And uh, the winner for each category will be announced on May 9th. And again, also part of the reason why we're doing this is so people can become used to, you know, series that aren't just sort of online or whatever like ishikan friends or you know like the flavor of the month kind of thing like there are other series in the world and a lot of them are even winning awards because they're like okay so ishikan please friends check is pretty out. good though. Ishik no i'm not saying ishikan friends is is bad it's like it's 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 decent uh maybe there are some kind of iffy parts but uh the point is it, it ended up becoming flavor of the month very badly for for a bit so you know there are other series in the world anyways uh best shonen manga nominees are uh, Fire Force or NN no Shobutai. Shobutai. I believe this uh, this is by Atsushi Okubo. Okubo Atsushi. I think this author actually wrote something else, right? Oh, Soul, Soul, Soul Eater. Eater. <laughs> yeah. Soul Eater. Okay, interesting. So Soul Eater. So the author of that, um, uh, Kanada Yosuke, writing uh, Kishiko Gakko no Juliet. Uh, Kato Kotono, Altair, A Record of Battles. Of this is pretty known, I think. Pretty well known one. Uh, Kotoyama writing Takashi Kashi. Hey, I read that yeah. one. Oh, oh yeah. Huh? Hey, hey. hey. I thought that was a comedy. Huh. I mean, it's probably aimed for like, I mean, look, it's it's like every episode is like, I'm selling candy. Like, guys, it's probably, it's probably not like the same. Uh, best shoujo manga, the nominees are Omoi, Omoare, Furi, Furi, Furare. By Saki Saka Yo, uh, Dekuchi Zero by Harui Seta, which I've actually uh, heard of. I've actually uh, bookmarked it. I haven't read much of it though. Uh, Harumatsu Gokura by Anashin, uh, P to JK, or JK is like uh, Josh Kose, and P is probably Policeman, uh, by Maki Miyoshi or Miyoshi Maki. This one I've read. Uh, kind of interesting, but I mean, wow, it seems... wow, you, you read? <laughs> hey, shut up. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Uh, the the nominees for best general manga, Grand Blue, by Inoue Kenji, art by Yoshioka Kimutake. Um, The Fable by Minami Katsuhisa. The Interviews with Monster Girls. This one people a lot of people know right now, also known as Demi Chan wa Katari Tai, by Petosu. Tokyo Tarareba Girl, Tokyo Tarareba, Tarareba Musume, by Hiroshimura Akiko. And Otaku ni Koe ni Muzukashi, or oh, sorry, Otaku ni Koe wa Muzukashi by Fujita, or also known as, uh, uh, I guess, falling in love with an otaku is hard. Now, so I've read mo I've read most of these except for Fable and Tokyo Tarareba Girls. They're okay. Yeah. Otaku ni Koe isn't as good as I can't understand what my husband is saying though. <laughs> I don't, I don't, usually a lot of these don't tend to be like egregious series unless they're like huge mainstream like elephants that are like I mean, like serve a spot or something. Interviews with Monster Girls is probably going to be pretty mainstream. I mean, I, I'm not saying like the chances for our series being bad is usually like not that bad unless they are some weird like mainstream like monster is what I'm saying. Um, Do you write season two? Please no. <laughs> but yeah, so please do watch out for that. And for the awards, and if you do like the sound, of, or please also, you know, do check out, you know, forty first, forty first Kodansha Manga Awards and stuff like that on Google. See, you know, maybe what titles you might be interested in checking out. All these are pretty okay titles, so nothing wrong with checking them out. Next thing on the manga list or on the manga news, uh, so somebody posted a um, title about the the biggest first printings of like volumes. From the various, you know, major produce publishers, Kodansha, Shokakukan, Shueisha, 
from 2016 to 2017. And they put the largest, the first printing copies here. So this is like the initial printing, like how, how many like, like gets printed and like in comparison to like what people expect and so on. And I guess I'll just rank the uh, number, like I guess top fives from each one. So the top fives from Kotansha are number five, Ajin, number four, Saint Youngman, or like Buddha or Saint Buddha or something like that, I think it's also what it's called. Number three, the heroic legend of Arslan. Number two, uh, the seven deadly sins are also known as Nanatsu no Taizai. Number one, Attack on Titan. And Attack on Titan, holy shit. Attack on Titan wow. outsold Nanatsu no Taizai by like three times over well, the wow. I mean, It's almost like it's popular. It's almost Jeez. like it's the one it's the one anime that most people who don't who recommend anime to non anime watchers will recommend. That is true. I was just like Whoa. But what about One Punch Man? One Punch Man. Uh, Gateway so anime is not Kordansha, is it? Uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, this is not... here we go. Actually. Oh, we'll we'll go. Uh, Shukaku Khan. Uh, number five, Takashi Kashi. Number four, Pierre. Yeah, right number three, Baki. Number two, Major Second. And number one, Detective Conan. Whoa. Detective Conan Ooh. actually has like, similar super old though. Uh, like, so is Detective Conan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so oh, is yeah, Detective yeah, Conan. Yeah. Uh, Shueisha, number five, One Punch Man. Uh, oh, four. there you go. Yeah, number four, Tokyo Ghoul Re. Uh, number three, Assassination Classroom. Number two, Hunter Hunter. Number one, The King, One Piece. <laughs> yeah, Whoa, the big one. <laughs> It's, but, the, yeah. it's, the last, it's the last bastion of, of shonen manga. Oh, yeah, it's the only good series left. I thought that was Bleach. Oh, wait, Bleach, Bleach ended. Bleach is though. over, my man. Yeah, yeah, that's is... true. One Piece is all that's left. What a good series. Hey, man. It ended, though. <laughs> but, Naruto's yeah, those... over, too. That's yeah. true. Naruto's over. But yeah, those are some, you know, interesting. I mean, not, like, too surprising, but there are some uh, numbers in there that we didn't expect too much. I'm surprised One Punch Man's so low. Yeah. Oh, it has I to mean, fight against the other ones. So. Tokyo Ghoul is, I guess, I mean, Tokyo Ghoul is still really popular, especially in, like, I mean, I guess all over the world is actually pretty popular. It's kind of like you're in niche spot, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I mean, it is. class was popular. over. It is. Oh. Oh, right, right. It only uh, ended, it ended a printings. little while ago, yeah. It's doing volume printings, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so with that we are uh done with uh the main news we'll just go over a quick bit of people news oh i want to shout out um your name did uh did come out in uh u.s and canada the kimi no nawa makuto shinkai movie that everybody apparently and their mother apparently knows by now did come out uh one day ago so please if if there is a theater near you that is streaming or is screening it check it out i mean Makata Shinkai is apparently not satisfied. Uh, he it, he told me not to go see it, so I'm not going to. Oh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> Please, Makata Shinkai is telling you guys not to see it, so don't go see it. <laughs> it's not it's not his best work, so never go see it. Wait, it already came out? It came out yesterday, apparently, in US and Canada uh, theaters. I might have to watch it then. But yeah, um, please do check it out. It's probably going to come out in a couple you, months. You live in Canada, don't you? <clears throat> yeah, there's a showing in the theater in my town. On like the twelfth, though, so I don't know. You watch I don't it? know if I'm gonna go. <sighs> I might, but there's probably some, like fucking greasy nerds there. I don't know where. Huh. But, okay, I, I might watch it. There's well, one. At, Shin God. Go, there's go, one don't you one. don't you want to listen to the people listening to Kimi no tell you all about how good, uh, fucking Madion and the Porter Robinsons. New anime is. Hey, dude, oh, have, have you heard of Porter Shelter? Saved anime. Have you heard? Do you know how good Porter Robinson <laughs> is at making anime? Wait, I can't uh, believe Crunchyroll gave Porter Robinson such a great opportunity to work on this anime. It's, it's, I can't believe Crunchyroll made such a good anime. <laughs> it says uh, your name is available in both English sub and English dub. Like how? Uh, what if I want to watch it in Korean? Or... It's not in Korean. Uh, I'm sorry, Toos. Is this Korea that you're looking for <laughs> showing in? 
Ah, Jesus. Anyways, uh, with that, we'll move on to the people news. Just a couple of uh, things. There's, like there's, a, things. there's a screening in uh, 17 minutes. Hurry up so I can go watch it. <laughs> Actually, I think... But anyways... Moving on, uh, one or two, a couple of people news this time around. One is Yukari Tamura, the person who, excuse me, famous for doing Nanoha. Yeah. Yes, Nanoha, exactly. Nanoha, uh, Nanoha, uh, of the titular magical girl lyrical Nanoha franchise. Uh, she's obviously done a lot of other characters. My uh, canon may may the. The sidekick's little sister in Kana. What the fuck? Can I? Okay, she's done a lot of mean roles. Why is she? Why? Oh, God, anime news network is so bad. She's, the, <laughs> like... she, she's the she's the wife in Danaga Wakara Naiken too. Yeah, dude, oh, I can't understand what my God. Did, why did they put Milky Holmes here? Yeah, I know. What? Okay, okay. Can I? Swashmark. Okay, well, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a call later. This is not something. Like <laughs> this is actually bad, but Yukari Tamura has done a lot of uh, sort of, I guess, gen- Genki roles. Like no, Rin. <laughs> yeah, genki roles. Um, but she is uh resuming her singing activities with hey, a live hey. concert on in summer. She, uh, she did uh when her contract ended last year during the spring with her um with her uh, record like publisher and stuff like that with the record company. She did actually stop her. Uh, I guess singing, singing activities for quite a while, but now a year later she's coming back. So please do watch out for that. Uh, on some other idol news, I guess other slash idol slash voice actor news, the idol group comprised of uh, Ogura Yui and Ishihara Kaori, which is uh, Yui, Yui Kaori, the idol group, has announced on Friday that the group is halting activity on June 30th. So Ogura and Ishihara can focus on their individual careers. In addition, Ishihara is leaving her current co- agency, Sigma Seven, one of the bigger agency companies out there, if not probably like one of the biggest. Um, Ogura, Yu- Ogura was also previously represented by Sigma Seven, but moved on to Claire Voice at the beginning of 2016. So this was pretty popular idol group, as I mean they were both very popular voice actresses. So, uh, but what's interesting, what's more interesting is. Um, Anime News Network actually posted a, an article later updating it, where it's like, voice actress Yui Ogre posted on her official blog on Wednesday regarding the recent announcement of the breakup of Yui Kaori, a musical duo comprising her and fellow actress Kaori Ishihara. Ogre stated that she is still confused over the announcement, but that her and Ishihara's relationship remains unchanged from before. She said that she respects Ishihara's decision, and both are now looking ahead to move on. So I'm not sure whether there was so a fallout or like whether it was some sort of company thing that led to Ishihara leaving and Ishihara just suddenly left the group and some weird thing happened. But like, there's some weird shenanigans going on. <laughs> weird, dude. But really, is it is it really a group if it's two people? That's true. It's just like one person cuts and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I hope nothing terrible has happened, like behind the scenes, like especially with uh, Kaori Ishihara, because apparently she's the side that's breaking up, not y- Ogura Yui. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, Ogura Yui's just like, what happened? <laughs> I'm not in the group anymore. <laughs> but uh, I-, I do hope that uh, there's nothing wrong with that's going on. But if you are a fan of these idols, please do wish them the best of luck in their future uh, endeavors. Uh, one last piece of person news. Um, and this one was a pretty big hit. Um, two weeks ago, the uh, Sato Daisuke, Daisuke Sato, uh, who was the manga manga artist behind High School of the Dead, passed away at uh, the age of 52. Uh, his immediate family have already held a funeral service. Uh, uh, but I mean, High School of the Dead, like, as meme status as it was, it was pretty, like... Pretty good. <laughs> pretty good but pretty uh, good <laughs> but like it was also like a notable thing like it changed people right it changed the way like people thought about like anime like how people kind of led on from there in terms of like yeah, changed, and so on so really changed the way i live my life you know <laughs> yeah that's true it really changed <laughs> the way that i would live if i was caught stuck in a zombie situation or if i was in like soaking wet <laughs> or whatever <laughs> or dodging bullets uh but 
again, it's it's very unfortunate, and we do wish uh, condolences. Uh, we do send our best condolences to, you know, his friends and family. And with that, people news is done, and we come to our shoutouts and callouts. Our shoutouts again. It's just one thing from each person about one thing that they like over the past two weeks. One thing that they want to compliment, praise, uh, put two hands up, whatever about, and it can be anything: food, people, you know, manga, not Crunchyroll, so on. Uh, and the shout and the callouts is the exact opposite. You can insult, rant on, whatever about one thing, and it can be anything from a trend, person, nation. His period in history, whatever. So I guess I'll go first. And my call out is freaking anime news network. <laughs> Every time, because because like I'm the one that has to read the news, and I still want to have the viewers be informed, right? Like it's not just like a random person we're talking about. It's a person that did X Y Z. Like hopefully these X Y Z things are something that people recognize. A lot of times, like anime news network lists their accomplishments. Right, and I'm just like, oh, I can read these off. But then I start reading them off. I'm just like, like nobody cares about these series. Nobody cares, <laughs> like, care. or they can, or they care, but like they they have roles in it that are just like, like irrelevant. <laughs> like sure, she did may like you could tell her did the little sister of the sidekick in Clown or whatever. Who the fuck cares? I, like, <laughs> I care. She was the, this background character for five seconds in Oni Chi Chi. Yeah, like I was just like, guys, come on, like, do like, do you guys have people that like watch anime in this place that can actually like what list what anime? people have done? <laughs> come on, guys. Uh, so that's my call out. Um, as for my shout out, uh, my shout. Yeah, I was, my shout out's actually gonna go to Ear because I uh, I actually pressed upon him to actually watch. Near Automata, I heard that was a good game though. Yes, <laughs> Near Near Automata is actually one of them. But um, uh, I I pressed on him to actually you know have have his stuff ready, have his documents ready for for the podcast <laughs> and he followed through in a way that i never thought what he would do by watching it manga sensei <laughs> yeah I, I didn't see it coming either but yeah uh, for that he gets my shout out uh and with that near shout out call please. um i had a call out of mine but i, I don't i didn't really want to get political so um <clears throat> i'm gonna call out uh I guess the Ghost in the Shell movie. Um, wow, I thought you said we were uh, going to get political. I don't know. It's a bad movie. I don't know how political that can get. She's but saying, uh, it's... But it's uh, Michelle Hansen, man. She said she is a big fan of Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. Um, apparently not. Uh, <laughs> the movie is officially a flop, uh, both uh, locally and internationally. It's apparently... <clears throat> expected to lose at least sixty million dollars. Um, it's not very good. Uh, I didn't go watch it because, like, I'll watch Berserk, but I'm not gonna watch that. Like, I'm not gonna pay money to go see Ghost in the Shell. But I do have friends that went and saw it, and they all. They all had surprisingly different opinions of it, but most most of the consensus was uh, it's not very good. It's pretty shit. Um, there's a lot of needless dialogue that kind of tries to be too deep for you and ends up saying nothing. Are you all just? It's hard. Just mine's just ghosts in the shell. <laughs> yeah. Apparent. Apparently, they they use the term ghosts uh, wrongly. <laughs> like they didn't even watch or read like any of the source material which is weird considering all of the promotional material is like oh man we're such big fans of the original so, what i mean that's what they say um, for every adaptation of a japanese thing they said that for dragon ball evolution yeah but whatever um so yeah uh call outs to ghost in the shell you you reap what you sow and now you're losing 60 million dollars so 
Go for it today. Dude. Have fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Sh- shout outs to Spire fucking not having two some of the most important pieces of news in the past few days. Uh, Ghost wait, wait, in the Shell wait. is getting a new anime by uh, Kenji yeah. Kamiya, the guy who did uh, Standalone Complex, I believe. Yeah. And fucking uh, Black Lagoon is coming out of hiatus after uh, like <laughs> three, three, three years, man. Yeah, Black Lagoon. Uh, Fuck me, three. man. God. A lot of these, a lot of these series are like coming out at the same time. It's very um, a lot of these, I guess, especially like darker series, so are, are kind of like coming out of the woodworks now. Uh, I mean, not that that's a bad thing, but yeah, they are doing it at you know around this time, and whether that's just like a result of some Western audiences taking interest, or whether that's like you know just the anime market in general growing, it's it's up to debate. <laughs> Because now they know anime is for adults. Wow. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Shoutouts to Black Lagoon coming back. That's real exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, I hope if Ghost, if new Ghost in the Shell is CG, I'm ending it all. <laughs> it's going to be like Berserk CG. And what if they use pie. the new, the new, uh, live anime? For the major, from, <laughs> from the, uh, movie, yeah. Uh, then I'll end it all twice. <laughs> it's gonna be the first live, or it's gonna be the, the live anime adaptation ever. It's gonna have fucking. Oh, Jesus. It's all rotoscoped. <laughs> Akhnohana flashbacks, not like this. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So, Dork. Shout out to college, please. Uh. Man, I don't know. Damn. Nothing good. good talk. Nothing good happened. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Everything's bad. <laughs> Fucking. What, <sighs> what especially is bad? Well, um, you know what? Screw it. This is like just a thing, I guess, that I just found out. Like callouts to uh, FromSoft for the amount of cut content from Dark Souls Three and the DLCs. Yo, like, shoutouts to FromSoft for holy. making DLCs entirely out of reused. Co- fucking assets yeah like goddamn dude holy fuck there's straight up weapons in dark souls 3 that you just can't get like there's a weapon called the gold tracer and the it's like dark silver tracer. hey those were in the first game yeah those were really cool weapons in the first game and they're a pair they're a pair of swords in uh, dark souls 3 wow. too bad you can't get them <laughs> they have a full move set and they're fully functional but you can't get that. <laughs> um, so Maybe that's it would make the game too easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Dark Souls is really hard, you know. Yeah. And also, there's like a bunch of armor sets that you can't get, like boss armor, giant boss in the game's armor, and it's like fully working and has item descriptions. But you can't get them. And if you do put them in your game, you'll probably get banned the moment you try and connect online. Yep. So. That's fun. Great, great game. Um, good time. You just have to ban evade. Apparently, really easy. And uh, what's your uh, shout out here? My uh, what happened. Uh, yeah. Out, even though we'll probably discuss it next week. Shout out to. Soccer requests, and he's probably going to be as I look forward to. Every- That's about it. Bit. Okay. Oh, so, shout out to the soccer requests and Hinako. Hinako, no, yeah. Okay. All right. So that's that. And last but not least, we have Toast. Oh, you know what? Call out to Umaru season two in fall, actually. Because <laughs> what? That's what? Like, but like, it's. But- the you know best anime it's just of look, all time. Like look, me, man. Look. I can relate so much. Look. You know, I play Street Fighter. <laughs> no, you. It's not even. It's not even you play Street Fighter. You play a fighting game. <laughs> you know. Don't you know. I play. I play the video game. 
<laughs> the PC yeah. and D video game. <laughs> that's that's the problem with Umaru is that it doesn't it's it's the Big Bang Theory event because it doesn't actually make references or decent references. It, it, it does the least amount of effort to make a reference. And it's like, that's funny, right? You and there's know, no actual joke there. You guys know Metal Gear? <sighs> you guys know yeah. about it? <laughs> you guys and know about that, that, that's my <laughs> favorite part is like, for their Metal Gear reference, DA. <laughs> they don't even reference like anything from Metal Gear. They're like, they just say CQC or whatever. Hey, you guys know CQC? Yeah. That's in a video game that uh, we all I, know, right? I, I get it. Like, like, the best way to describe this is, like, this is the big, I mean, like, other than the Big Bang Theory, that you, the analogy that you use, but it's, like, the other way to do it is, like, this is, like, the biggest does anybody else <laughs> in, like, the history of anime. <laughs> like, does <laughs> anybody else? Hey, like, guys, you, know, you, you get this reference we're making? Huh, huh, do you? Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, hey, guys, yeah, it, do you, like... References, like, because let me tell you about this. Like, like, anime. Anime. <laughs> Fucking, I was rewatching. Have, I mean, <laughs> have you heard of Hatsune Miku? <laughs> I was rewatching uh, Gochiusa, and Gochiusa has a fucking Metal Gear reference that was better and more well done than Umaru, and that's not a parody, it's like a reference series. It's, it's also not okay. Like, it's also not okay. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but Mon Musu yeah, had Mon Musu, Mon Musu like really reenacted good. an entire fucking scene from Metal Gear. Yeah, but like, oh, man, like you fucking mentioned like character in Gochusa mentioned CQC and then the flowers oh. of uh, what's it called appear in the bag. The boss. Not no that well that's not what they're called it's like the flowers of. I don't know. I don't remember Bethlehem. Is that what it is? I don't know. The flowers of the yeah. boss. That's what they're known for. <laughs> yeah, so, like, ah, man, just Omer, like, the thing that pissed me off the most is that, like, I can't, now I get to hear about it from fucking all these people on Twitter about how amazing Omeru is. It's like, hey guys, Omeru's back. That's gonna be another, like, couple of years now for it to die down again. Omeru's oh, back. Yeah. I'm a big anime fan now. By the yeah. way, <laughs> much, by the way, I like anime. <laughs> do you guys know how much I like anime? I watched Umaru. <laughs> what have I? What else have I watched? Uh, I I like anime. <laughs> yeah. It's not about how much you watch, okay? Yeah, it's about how hard you watch. Yeah, but yeah, it's 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 really unfortunate that Umaru. I mean, like Umaru is. I think it's I fine really, to like it. Like, I, I, think I mean, hell, I watched it all. No, I, I, there's okay. nothing so, so wrong this, with liking things. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this, this is my specific thing. So, I think it has its own value, and I don't want to say. Well, I guess the closest thing that I would say it, it represents its value is sort of the, the whole like Roger Ebert like sophomoric humor kind of thing. That's sort of the closest thing it comes to, but I, which I appreciate it for like at its ground level, but when people kind of um. Elevate it, elevate it, right? Exactly, elevate it to this sort of like grand character, Satur. The best right? anime of all Satur. time because it is so relatable. Yeah, like, so me. <laughs> when people are just like, "Wow, it's it's so amazing!" Like, Understands I can't me. believe the references that it makes, like stuff like that. Right? It's just like, a, yeah, <laughs> me IRL, me IRL. Yeah, it's it's very unfortunate. So, oh. Um, so I guess that's, <laughs> I guess that's that. And with that, we are done with the shoutouts callouts section. Again, uh, we do have a lot of uh, new updates. Um, we recently got our new iTunes, uh, iTunes and Play Google Music or Google Play Music site up or page up for our uh, anime podcast and we'll be updating it pretty right or uh, soon after our our regular stream uh and so if you have you know a mobile device or if you use itunes or you know and android stuff you can check us out just on uh you can check us out on those pages and download our podcast or play it in itunes or whatever you want to do so so that's yeah. despire for doing all that shit <laughs> i mean it was just mostly just rss feed stuff but um you know, so we do have that. We'll be updating it, and we do have all of the MP3s and everything. You know, of 
of the VODs finally available for those of you who are just like, oh, I want MP3. And you know, I do understand that you guys want to download it. So now you guys can listen to it wherever you go, you know, instead of uh, being reliant on YouTube or Twitch. So that's that. And we'll be trying to, you know, update people regularly on when stuff is happening with dates and everything. So things are a bit more clear. So hopefully that all that helps out and you guys are kind of like, you know, <laughs> waiting out for it. So that's that. As usual, we stream this every other, every other Saturday at 10, starting from 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we talk about the latest and greatest and anime, manga, visual novel, novel, light novel, stuff like that. Uh, we stream our recordings live on twitch.tv slash 4 animecast That's with the number four. And you can find us here as well as uh, updates on updates and you know other content on various stuff. Again, related to anime and manga on our various social media. Facebook, Twitter, uh, Facebook 4Play Anime Cast, Twitter at 4PP Anime Cast, again, all with the number four. And you can find us on our site as well on 4PlayAnimeCast.moe, where we have a repository of our uh, various episodes. We have some sidecasts uh, uploaded where we you know, scream at bad visual novels for the most part, right? And. <laughs> Dude, our fucking, first thing is those fucking black borders, dude. <laughs> so good, and it crashed too. <laughs> uh, uh, that's like the last two shows we, or the last two visual novels we had. Right? Both of them just crashed for whatever yeah. reason. But uh, anyways, we have those, and we have you know interviews and other content from various fan contributors and community people. Um, I actually have an interview. Uh, we all we're actually going to have a pretty recent uh, uh sorry an interview uh brand new one coming up pretty shortly um the interview is actually happening tomorrow so it'll be up in a few days so please do check us out uh, it'll be a pretty good surprise there and we'll probably be doing some sort of weird you know visual novel cast <laughs> sometime in the future in the near future so check us out there too so yeah uh check us out there give us a follow like on facebook whatever and uh, until next time. Okay. It may fucking sucks dick. <laughs>